In the first part of this lesson, I showed you how to use trap code 3D stroke and shine with an additional of the CC glass effect in order to create our main titles background that you see here. In the second part, I will show you how to use Zuckworks Invigorator Pro in order to create a 3D titles and animate them inside After Effects. So we have a lot of things to do. Let's stop the RAM preview, come out of full screen, and at the end, I will just want to remind you, we will create something like this. So this will be the end result. We will use the 3D titles and I will show you how to animate them with a nice sound effect here inside After Effects. Okay, so let's come out of this and we can also close the footage window. We will use the main titles background later at the third step when we will combine everything together, but now we will create a new comp in order to generate our 3D titles. This composition will host the 3D titles, so I will just rename it 3D titles. Instead of using a basic PAL dimension, I will triple the amount of width by 3 and same for the height. So the end result will be a large title and if we want to scale it beyond the dimension of PAL, we will have enough pixels in order to do so. The duration for this comp should only be one frame and now you can choose OK. Now let's change the zoom from 100 into fit up to 100% because we want to see everything that we have here. And now we are ready to begin. For the first stage, I like to create a new solid. I'll use this solid in order to add to it the Zuckworks effect. But before doing so, I just want to pop inside the Illustrator for just one moment because it is very important to prepare your vectors inside a software like Adobe Illustrator, something that will hold the vectors that Invigorator can work with. So here we are looking at the design of the title that we will work with, the motion design with Adobe After Effects, powerful techniques to kickstart your work, of course. And this is still text. So if we will select it and just save it, Invigorator will not be able to read it. So it is very important to right click and create outlines out of it. When you've done this, you can go under File and choose Save or Save As, navigate to wherever you want, choose the Save command. I will also suggest to save it in a legacy format, maybe CS2 or something like this. Just make sure that Use Compression is not enabled. Then you can choose OK and you can come back into After Effects, select the layer, go under Effect, Zuckworks, and choose 3D Invigorator. Now you will be presented with this dialog. You can of course create your 3D text here inside Invigorator, but we already have an Illustrator file. So I will open Illustrator file, navigate to my desktop. This is where I save the file and choose OK. Now it will take some time and After Effects will render your title inside 3D Invigorator and show you the result on your composition view. But we want to modify it inside Invigorator, so I will just make enough room for me to work because I want to make sure that I can see this tiny red circle. If you press this circle, you will get inside 3D Invigorator setup window. Now I know that you can't see all of the details, but I will let you know if there's something which I'm pressing. Anyway, the first thing that I want to do is change it to a front view. So the title will be just in front of us. Now we will use the same material that we already have, the default material. But before doing so, let's select the object panel. Make sure that our title is selected and we will change the bevel from medium to a bevel small. This will change the way the edge of the letters will be. And you know what? I will even decrease it even further to something very, very small, maybe in the area of 10, something like this. I will leave the depth to 20. But I will change the object facing here from draft quality to something which looks a little bit better. And I think that 0.5, let's just write here, 0.5 will give us a very good result. 
Now, basically, this is all we have to do in this stage. If you want to check your render, you can hold down Command or Control, and the OK button will change into Test. So you can just do a quick test here inside the Invigorator setup window, and if you like the result, like I am, you can also choose OK. This will bring us back inside After Effects, and After Effects will recalculate the result. Now, it might take couple of minutes because we are working in a very large composition. I will also select the invigorator window and change the views here to front so we will be able to see it from the front view. I will also ask invigorator to use my comp lights so by enabling this we will not see anything here until we will add our own light. So now let's go to layer and select new and choose a new light and I will choose a point light and I will change the intensity to 65% and I'm not going to use cast shadows. Let's choose OK and now Invigorator will re-render our result using our comp light. Now we are not done yet. I want to add another layer which will be like a 3D extrusion of the wireframe that goes behind this layer. I mean, I want just to see the extrusion of our design in a wireframe mode. This will help us to understand that this DVD is about motion design. You know, everything with a wireframe look to it always looks to me like there is some kind of design behind it. In order to illustrate it better, I will select the toggle transparency grid so we will see the depth of our letters. I will select the letters layer, which is the gray solid with the invigorator effect on top of it. And I will choose edit and duplicate. So now we've got two effects, two sets of effects working the same way, but we want to change the upper layer. And if you want to be a little bit more organized, you can also rename the top layer to something like wireframe look. Okay, now that we did this, let's again come back to the invigorator menu and choose the little red circle and let's modify the look of the second instance. Let's first select this instance, go under material. Let's first change the material by giving it a different color and I will just select some kind of dark blue color. And if you want to see an update of it, you have to drag this material on top of your vectors. In order to create a wireframe look, I will change it from standard color to a hidden line option. And in the options dialog, I will make sure the respond to lightning is enabled. Let's choose OK and let's change the highlight sharpness from 80 to something very high, maybe around 160. I will also change the highlight brightness to a value of somewhere around 50. And just to make sure, I will drag again the material on top of my scene. Then again, I can use Ctrl or Command and do a test render here inside this Invigorator setup window. And see, this is exactly what I wanted. I can see the wireframe, but I'm not seeing the wireframe here on top of the letters because I choose the hidden line mode. So because this layer will be on top of our previous layer, once we choose OK and come back into After Effects, this layer will render on top of our original layer and it will give us this look. Now, before we will check our final result, I want to give it an additional look to it. So I will go under layer and add an adjustment layer on top of everything. And to this adjustment layer, I will go under effect, blare and sharpen, and I will select the fast blare effect. I will add a blurriness of, I say something like 10 pixels, and we will change the mode from normal to screen. And this will just add a nice soft glow effect to the whole design. Now we can toggle back the transparency and check our result in full screen. And if you want, you can also raise it up to 100% so you can just see the effect that we did. And I will just 
use the hand tool in order to demonstrate the wireframe effect with the little glowish look that we did. If you feel that this glow is a little bit too harsh for you, you can always lower the blurriness to say five or four, whatever fits you. And I think this will really add to our scene. So now that we are happy with our title design, we can save this one out as a file and re-import it back to our project in order to do the final composition of our background and our titles. So first, let's make sure that we will save this frame as file and I will just point it to the desktop and you know what, I will just leave the name 3D title for this one. Here in the output model, I just want to make sure that it will re-import itself when it finished the render. So I will choose OK for that and just hit render. Now when we come back to our project panel, we can see that the 3D title.psd is ready for our use in the final comp. OK, so now let's do some house cleaning. We will close everything here. And we will open a new composition. This time we will stick with the PAL dimension and we will change the duration for 10 seconds or something like this. And now we can drag our main titles background into this scene. And we can also drag our 3D title.psd on top of it. It came in pretty big because we use a large canvas in order to generate our title and we will use these pixels once we place the title in the right place. So first let me just change the interface so we'll have more room to work. And I think around here like five seconds when this shape is started to get its movement, its nice movement, we will select our title and by hitting S we will just scale it down, I think around 30%, something like this. And you can always call the title action safe to make sure your titles are not being cut off. Okay, so at this point, I want to record a keyframe for the scale properties and just move backwards a few frames. And in this point of time, let's just scale this title very, very large, even beyond 100, say something around 300, 300 or something. So this will be the first animation. Let's also define a working area. We'll press B in the timeline and N after the last keyframe. Let's zoom in inside. Also, let's toggle here between the modes to the switches, enable motion blur to the layer and enable motion blur to the whole comp. And let's just do a quick run preview to check the area that we are working on. Okay, so you can see the titles are coming in. I think that we will even do it a little bit faster. And the last keyframe here, the scale keyframe, I will add an easy ease in into it. So by holding down shift and pressing F9, I will make it happen. Also, let's go to the beginning of this. And just before that comes in, let's just do a fade in animation as well. So I will hit shift T in order to reveal the opacity keyframes. I will record the keyframe here. We'll make sure it's on zero and then move a couple of frames forward by hitting page down a few times and just change it back to 100. So my animation will start from zero and then the letters will be appeared and smeared in due to the motion blur into the current position. Now let's zoom out of the timeline, change it a little bit, change our work area a little bit and give ourselves a little bit room in order to read the titles. And after you think it is enough time, and let me just zoom in a little bit more. Let's say that couple of seconds, I will place another keyframe here in the scale and just make sure that it will slowly scale down something like this. So between 30 here to maybe here 25%. And in this point of time, we want to make sure that they will disappear quickly and the other title will appear. So again, let's just move a couple of frames forward and let's just change it to zero. I will also change the easy ease to this keyframe as well. So I will select it and by choosing command or control plus shift and F9, I will give it an easy ease out animation. So basically this is it. This is how I did it. I created the background and then I used Illustrator in order to regenerate these titles. Also what will help to sell this is if we will of course go under source file 
and I use the slash titled in WAV, which is an effect that I created in order to emphasize the motion of the title into the scene. So I will just take this WAV and just place it here. I will hit LL in order to see the waveform. I will zoom here and make sure that the impact point will be just on top of this keyframe. So this should be something like this. Let's zoom back out and create our final RAM preview to check that everything is indeed working together. And of course we have to add an additional effect on the end, but you see the idea here. So if we'll take a look at full screen here, just create another RAM preview. Of course, you have to give it a little bit more time in order for the narrator to read your titles and everybody can understand. And I want to thank, of course, Aaron for doing the wonderful narration for this promo. Now that you know how to do it, I can show you the shorter version and you can get a sense of how I built everything on top of it. The only thing that you need to do now is go under the cow store and order yourself a copy of it because I think that you will really find a lot of good techniques and good tips inside this DVD. So I hope you find this one useful as well. And until next time we'll meet, this is Eran Stern for creativecow.net saying goodbye. The Creative Cow Master Series presents Motion Design with Adobe After Effects Powerful techniques to kickstart your work Hosted by Aaron Stern Five hours of fun lessons and serious AE chops. Seven real-world projects explore the depths of After Effects. In-depth training for beginners or advanced users. There's always something more to learn.